If you are a caregiver or if you know someone who is, then this video is for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Vanessa Boyce. I'm a physician who specializes in caring for our frail, elderly, or terminal people. I am also the founder of Mindful Next Chapters, which seeks to prepare people for their inevitable journey. If you find this content helpful, please click like and subscribe so that you are the first to know as I create more content. So let's talk about caregiver burnout. Family members are providing 70% of the care needed in the United States. That means that less than 30% of those needing care are getting it from professional providers. Professional providers are trained to provide care and they're getting paid. Family caregivers are not. Family caregivers are often so focused on doing all the daily things for their loved ones that they forget to care for themselves. Even their most basic needs can be neglected. The majority of caregivers report a decrease in their own health because of the care that they are providing. Caregiver burnout and collapse is a serious and frankly dangerous thing for our frail population and for us as a society. But it doesn't have to be this way. Today, I want to share methods for self-care that the caregiver can do to prevent burnout. I'm also going to share what those that know a caregiver can do to help. Those of you that know me are aware that I'm a big fan of bite-sized changes that can have huge impact. This bite-sized approach is perfect for reducing caregiver burnout. Palliative care and hospice providers are always on the alert for the red flags of caregiver burnout. Traditional care providers often have not been taught about the red flags or what to do about them. Whether you are the caregiver or the friend of a caregiver, you should learn about the red flags. The physical red flags are often the ones that are the most apparent to the caregiver and those around them. The physical issues are often relatively easy to address with small changes. However, it's been my experience that until the caregiver acknowledges and addresses the psychological or spiritual red flags, they won't be able to prioritize their own needs. The physical red flags are 1. Sleep deprivation 2. Poor eating, leading to weight loss or gain or not operating at your best because of poor nutrition. Third, Failure to exercise, which affects your physical and mental health. Number four, failure to keep up with your own medical care that then causes a condition you already have to deteriorate, or it may lead to missing the development of a new problem that if it was detected early, would have a better outcome. Here are some things to think about if you are a caregiver. If you are a friend of a caregiver, reflect on if you have witnessed or suspected that these things might be on the mind of your friend. 1. Do you feel you are being selfish if you put your needs first? This is absolutely a false premise. You are the most important part of the caregiving equation. As such, it is imperative for you to put your needs on top. Two. Do you have trouble asking for or accepting help? No caregiver can go it alone and come through the experience physically, mentally, and spiritually intact. Just like it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to provide for the needs of the frail. Number three, are you being the caregiver to prove you are worthy of the affection of the one you care for or the other members of the family? So many of us have the idea that we have to prove ourselves to be loved. 
This is such a false but deeply ingrained concept for most of us. Remember, we are all made in God's image, and as such, we are enough and we are worthy, no matter what. Do you feel that you have no choice but to be the caregiver? While this may be true, you cannot allow this to cause you to take on a victim identity. You might need to be the caregiver, but you control how to ensure your needs come first. Based on your thoughts about these questions, or if you are aware that your health is becoming affected by your caregiving, it's time to do something. I recommend that you identify a goal. Make this goal broad and achievable. Then identify small, specific actions you can take towards achieving this goal. An example may be to set the goal to manage stress better. Some of the action items might be, one, learning to recognize your personal signs of stress. I have a facial twitch. Two, identify the thing that is causing this stress. Number three, journal about what you can and cannot change. Four, create a list of your personal stress busters or use the link below to see if any of my personal stress relievers could resonate with you. If you are the loved one of a caregiver and have stuck through this video, hopefully you recognize how important your supporting role is in this scenario. The caregiver is often so exhausted that they cannot see the danger they are in. You are uniquely positioned to help them. I have created a list of ways to support a caregiver. The list comes directly from what the caregivers of my patients have told me help them. You can access this list in the description below. That's it for today. I'm looking forward to connecting with you again in my next video. Thank you and God bless.